Our next scripture uh, and prayer meditation is going to be shared with us by Pastor uh, David Franceau from Evangelist Crusaders Church. Pastor David. First of all, I want to thank Brian and all those of you that are here. Allow me the privilege to speak to you, and thank you for coming. I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 27, verses 27 through 31. It says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison unto, around him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. But Jesus was humbled by going to the cross, as it tells us in the book of Ephesians. In the text I read, we see one of the ultimate displays of Jesus' humiliation. Jesus not only took the physical punishment for the sins that we had committed, but he also took a psychological and emotional punishment, as you can see in these scriptures. In suffering for our sins, Jesus was socially humiliated by his fellow countrymen. He was publicly disgraced by national and religious leaders and now he's physically being abused and mocked by his oppressors. But it was only for a moment. He was not defeated because it looked like someone got something over on him. We too may be mocked by different factions of our society from the lowest to the most elite, from the powerless to the most powerful, but it will only be temporary. We must remember God is not mocked. Psalms number 2 shows us God has the last laugh. It was, a for a it was for a purpose and just a short time that Jesus humbled himself, but he's not doing that now any longer except through us who stand in his stead to represent him on the earth. At present, Jesus is on the right hand of God in glory. There will be a day when Christ returns and sets up his kingdom on the earth, a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord of the glory of God the Father. And those who are saved will enjoy these moments with him. My point is, don't be discouraged. We will eventually win. Don't let the antagonism of those who oppose what is right lead you to be like them. Maintain who you are in Christ and let God do the work. Sometimes it is your very act of humility that will draw your opponent to the right side. They cannot understand your resolve to be humble. This will eat away at some of them when they leave the heat of the moment. And then when the moment is right, their hearts will be opened to the truth. Do you think these soldiers really knew what they were doing? No. They were blind to the truth. This does not absolve them of the guilt of their mockery. But understanding their blindness helps us as we, in compassion, seek to win others to the Lord and to the cause of life. Those that oppose life are blind to the truth. While we wait for our ultimate victory, we will push to see that one is gained for the truth. We will seek that the unborn are allowed the right to life. Stand strong in your commitment to stand up for what is right, but also stand strong in your commitment to do what is right when doing so. Stay humble and let God use you for his glory. And remember that in Christ we are always winners. Let's pray. Lord, help us to be humble as you were, as we seek to gain a victory for your cause, the cause of life. And may the eyes of our opponents be opened to the truth, that we all may enjoy the blessings of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.